So, would you like to do the introductions, Michelle? Welcome to Michelle's... I don't know what the hell's going to happen in Game of Thrones this season yes. series. <laughs> Best intro of any podcast ever. Welcome, welcome to Michelle's... <laughs> yes. I have notes, but I didn't come up with a title. <laughs> for some reason, you're listening to this episode, but didn't read the description. Uh, that Michelle said, I don't know what's happening in Game of Thrones this season. That's the name of this podcast. That's what we're talking about. Uh, spoilers, I guess, for the last seven seasons of uh, yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah, spoiler warning. Seven yes. seasons? Yes, seven God. seasons. Oh, uh, and I just can't a- believe it's been seven seasons since we got another uh, a book from George R. R. Martin. <laughs> it has. Wow. No, uh, not really. I think almost. he released one in yeah. the course of the series. Yeah, there was uh, one book. So it's Pete Al Frank, James via remote, and Michelle's taking the lead on this one. That's all the people who are here. We're going to talk about our... Um, what did you refer to? Uh, predictions, basically? Our, yeah, our, predictions. Yeah, um, I have topics. All right. Like, so, ge- like genre topics, I guess. All right. So I figured we can talk about who we think might die, mm. who we think's birthright will be revealed, because there's a few things there going on. Are there on. still any birthrights left to reveal? Gendry. Oh, fair. Then there's the whole, like, different relationships and possible babies. Yeah. The whole white war in the uh, Night King, Azura Good. He. If people are people familiar with the whole Azura, Azura he? High, a High, a He, a High. I don't know how to. Break it. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Let's, All right, get, yeah. let's get to one yeah. one thing yeah. first. Which so, one do you want to do first? Uh, mm, well done. Yeah. Deaths. Deaths. Let's All talk right. about deaths. Who do we think is going to die? Because I feel like that's really going to be what's going to happen. That people are going to be heartbroken over. This mm. is what I'm I'm saying here. Is like I, I last season seemed very skittish. On the perma deaths, besides the dragon, yeah. Um, well, that was a very perma. That was huh? That was perma frost death. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. He died, but he he didn't quite come back, or he didn't come back right. Mm. Um. So that's the biggest, and then uh, the unfortunate passing of Littlefinger, which I'm still angry about. Um, I'm, all right, please explain that because you not sound many people like are. you sound like the defender all right. of some atrocities. I, I'm, all right, this is my problem with Littlefinger is that. I thought that that character was very interesting, very compelling, and the true villain of the entire series. Um, and the reason why he died was because of the terrible thing that happened to Sansa that I felt was horrible, made me stop watching the show, because I thought it was that bad, and also felt he would have never let happen in the first place. So for, for me, it was he died terribly for something stupid, for a horrible thing in, mm. in the show that I never thought he would have ever let happen anyway. So it was just like, oh my god. He should have really? been better than that. Yeah, everything about that character should have yeah, been better than he, that. And he kind of like, like, dropped his guard in his maniacal machinations. I do, yeah. I do have to support Al's hatred of season six. It's not good. No, it's not. And it's just everything. <laughs> so much, And that was him dying was byproduct of season six. And a lot of the, like, out-of-character weird stuff that happened in it. Like, he had to pay for it. He did. I appreciate that they try to streamline stuff, and that's probably why some of the stuff happened. I'd rather it than be infinitely long seasons. Yeah. Uh, But, uh, you know, I get it. I get your point. But we're not talking about the past. We're talking about the future. Yeah. I think there were a little skittish. I think that, I think moving off of the game, like, we don't have any more works of uh martin to rely on nope so i don't think we're going to be like required to have lots of death but i do think we're going to get some i would say i think the majority of the remaining stark family is out i don't think they're gonna i think maybe sansa survives i think Arya's is dead really yeah i feel like Arya is the only one who actually stands a chance of making out i have a theory mm. i think Arya's is already dead Ooh. Oh, I think she Ooh. died in the scene we saw her get stabbed and it's and the person that we are interacting with now is, is the, no one or whatever it's called? Is one it of has the pe- no name. It, yeah, it's, it's probably even the person that killed her. Oh. That's my theory on uh, on Arya at this point. That's amazing. I like should, that one out. We should <laughs> end the podcast. We're not gonna come up. Sorry, we led with all right, ten minutes done. of stupid because we this was some gems. Oh, all right. I, I have an important one I want to throw out there. Okay, go ahead. Who, right. do thinks, who do you think's dead? I I think kind of going back to Frank streamlining stuff. Jamie has to die. If we're just talking about storytelling, Jamie's character is so oddly problematic in his kind of back and forth from like someone we care about to somebody who's a complete and absolute asshole. It's really important that he dies. It 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 allows us not to have to like overthink our relationship with Jamie in the series. If he's the guy who ends up walking away from this being like, yeah, you know what? I'm okay. Yeah. You know, and he can do some awesome stuff. 
there at the ending of the battle, but I think to really clear up the Lannister thing, Jamie's going to have to bite it because he can't he can't be this like great white knight person that we like and also be this horrible person. He needs to kind of pick a side and the minute he picks the side, which kind of feels like what happened, it, it commits him to death, I think, personally. To tagline with that, I think Jamie's going to end up dying because he kills Cersei. And then he like does the whole thing his son did and throws him off the like himself off the. He tommins. He yeah he, he tommins. tommins. He does himself. a tom. He he pulls a tommin. I would not be surprised if he did. I'll also tom. say I'm pretty. We're, I think we should be pretty certain Cersei's gonna die because. Uh, all right, one of my big complaints about last season and I walking into this season is I think Cersei at some point stopped being a character. Yeah. She's more of a plot device at this point, like I, she, which is a shame because she was a very highly intelligent and compelling character. And is now kind of just reduced to mustache twirling. I don't know. I think she was pretty pushed to the edge, so that like her, she became much more of a heel. Yeah. But I think she kind of like th- that earned it. There was some. Yeah. All her children circle. are dead. Th- but yeah. that's that's my problem. Is like all of her motivation is just kind of gone. Like her big motivation was her kids. Well, and now it's revenge yeah. against who? She Every, got everyone. Everyone. Revenge. everyone. Everyone. I mean, at yeah. that point, the world uh, took her kids, and I guess yeah, she wants yeah. to burn the world down. That's fine, but at no point do you we know really... what would really help her to burn the world down? A zombie mm. horde, dragons, dragons. Well, I, w- well, <laughs> I was a golden thinking... army. I think my prediction uh, is that th- th- I'm going to still focus on your uh, who's going to die. Golden army shows up, and they're going to end up killing. Uh, Hellboy. Uh, Hellboy, probably. Uh, <laughs> oh, the Golden Company is what they're called in this, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to. That's with Euron, right? Yeah, yeah, Euron went to go hire them, and I think they're going to end up killing most of John and Daenerys's forces. Like, I don't know who that's going to be. I don't think they're going to. Maybe they're not going to kill a dragon necessarily. They're going to kill Grey Worm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think de- that's probably. Grey Worm's yeah. definitely. Yeah. He's gone, and and most of the Dothraki that have re- remained, I think, are probably going to be wiped out in this. Are the uh, horses going to make it though? Uh, the horses will make it, and then they become the horses from the Gulliver's Travel story. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, interesting. Cool, cool. I think this might happen because I might also motivate uh, Jamie to uh, finally off Cersei because it's just kind of like, all right, well you you've put a, a shot in the foot so big at this point. I don't think we'll survive the bad things that are coming. And we already also know that he has the willingness to be violent towards her yeah hence the whole let me hold you down in in my son's own funeral all right then <laughs> moving right along i have <laughs> i have one prediction uh, yeah at some point in this season ned stark will be killed again again this is my prediction they blow up the statue Mm. I think so because the the first trailer that they really released was all the stark kids hanging out in the crypt yeah, right? I, I I would find it interesting if they revisit Ned because I think they will. I think they're going to revisit the whole the the Stark family. You think Sean Bean's going to come back? First off, I wouldn't I would be like surprised. To, I don't, I don't Maybe know. in a memory. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Stark uh, t- catacombs start spewing forth whites. Yeah, yeah, I, the undead. Uh, huh. As the as as the uh, White Walkers overrun the North. Yeah, it may the be, dead will rise. Because don't they have that graves. one undead uncle? Who's not really? A, he's 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 a zombie, yeah, but he's not like evil. Benjamin yeah. showed up yeah. with the, on the stag and saved everybody, but right. it looked like he got uh, pretty well bonked. Uh, yeah, the last uh, time we saw him. Uh, Michelle, do you have any uh, deaths that you'd like to add to the pile? Um, Jorah. Jorah. You think Mormon's gonna kick him? <laughs> you think I don't they know. Uh, uh, they <laughs> cured yeah. him just to kill him? That was yeah. great. That fair. was like yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, 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 I, Jorah. I've got, a, I've got a feeling he's probably going to make it, actually. I don't know. I feel like... Eh. I think Daenerys is going to be the one to kick it, really. I think she might die, too. Oh, I, I'm, I'm willing to I, bet. I think she's going to get what she wants at the very end, and everything's going to come out in the house, you know? And then... I'm yeah. not sh- I think her death will Jon be- Snow snaps her neck. No, 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 no. Let's, let's focus no on good a baby behind emerges all this. through yeah. her womb and I think, eats her. I think what's interesting about Daenerys dying is it's the ultimate F you to a... Like a narrative that fits anything, yeah. In terms of fantasy, she's not the chosen one. She's not the hero. That's good. She's not the breaker. She may be. She, she may is actually the free. Breaker of change. She frees Westeros in a way, but also by toppling the uh, Targaryen regime, so that nothing is the same as it used to be. I think that's possible. Ooh, maybe I, they'll have a democracy. 
I'm not. I I think we are giving too much. I almost said too much credit. I don't mean this in a nasty way. I think we're putting too much on uh, Martin's shoulders about how I, you know he breaks the mold. I do I'm think jump. he he is pretty much okay with giving us a standard narrative when it's appropriate. James, I, I'm going to totally piggyback off of this real fast, Frank, and say you're totally right. And one of the things that the show really has had difficulty tackling with in its later seasons is what made people think Martin's narratives were so subversive to begin with, which is in the books. Many of these characters that we lost were point of view characters, right? Right. And we have to have this tendency that point of view characters are the heroes. But Martin kind of said, no, not every one of these point of view characters is the protagonist, quote unquote, of our story, right? And the the show does a good job with that. At some points, I'll say Rob, right, in the early seasons, is a really good example of, of a character that wasn't a, you know, a point of view character that they highlight as feeling very important. Um, but as the show goes on, it's centered more naturally around the show's or the story's, you know, actual protagonists. So, I mean, it, it could be very possible that we see a Daenerys or a John really kick it. I mean, like they achieve their goals and then like, uh, you know, for a, a hunger game reference, just somebody just coins them, right? Somebody behind goes, okay, <laughs> well now that that's done arrow to the back of the head, you know, I yeah, think that's narratively the way they would that, fill the role, but at the same time they may not survive. I think, right. I, I think that's the way the, the TV show goes. See, we were subversive the whole time, even though I don't really think George R. R. Martin's narrative was subversive in that way i think yeah. it was really a good writing technique yeah and i think you lose a lot in the narration in the translation it's one of the reasons that scene we described earlier between jamie and Cersei is so uh horrible it's because it's not a there's no way real way of doing a point of view in a movie you know or at least they didn't that's it's a standard film with like yeah. the omnipresent third person you don't see the internal thoughts of the characters and what they are experiencing in the moment so that it what seemed less horrific in the book was much more horrific in the in the show yeah um let's see uh i i think we're we're basically done with the people we think we're gonna die is yeah. there yeah i don't think there, john's gonna die i think he's probably gonna i think make john it. will make it seriously won't. could i right Danny could won't. i Really? Wow. Okay. I, I'm I'm not sure about Arya. I think I think Sansa will. I think Sansa. I think people are predicting some nasty things for Sansa in the future. Yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe that's a good transition. Oh yeah, I think she might be pregnant. Oh. Mm. Oh oh, hold on. We have a special caller, a guest from our 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 one of our most popular podcasts on the network. Uh, hello, <laughs> Iman. Can you hear me? I can. I can. How's it going? We're, we're asking, well, who do you think will die in Game of Thrones? Oh, I think the whole lot. The meteors <laughs> are going to come and they're just going to destroy the whole <laughs> Meteors. White Walkers win. <laughs> but does Nymeria make it? So, yeah. Does Nymeria make it? I, I love the way this is going to play out. Wait, who's Nymeria? <laughs> Great. I'm terrible with names. She you know is this. a wolf. She is oh. Arya's wolf. Yes. Do you know who Arya is? I do know who Arya is. Stop it. We, she brought me to a Game of Thrones trivia night, and in the middle of the trivia night, said, what's the name of this show again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, but do you think no Nymeria is? I was just testing you. Oh, that was <laughs> very clever. Ah. So, yeah, you're predicting everyone dies, but you actually do think it's going to be a, a complete everyone's dead? Um, no, not really. I think, like, the White Walkers are going to probably win. Like, something ridiculous is going to happen. It, I feel like it's not going to be what everyone expects. I really would love it if it becomes a, a crossover with uh, Walking Dead and both shows get revived. <laughs> it would be great. All right, Iman, thank you very much. Uh, where can we find out more about your podcast? I think it's on nonproductive.com. That, that's right? it. That's perfect. I think it's on nonproductive. <laughs> Wonderful. It's, Thank it's you. It's on that network. You yep. Know, yep, know yep, yep, yep. We're going to just hang up on her. Okay. <laughs> and oh, she's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, I, I actually think that there's a good chance that the story does end with everyone dying and it projecting way in the future, uh, which is not quite what we would think, but like we're going to get Sam Tarly as the Bilbo Baggins narrator of the entire thing he's writing 
the Game of He's Thrones. The, yeah. or the, oh, I think that's obvious. I've, seen, I've yeah. seen that theory before. Yeah. I kind of don't I, want that, though. It seems a little too I feel like it all seems up. all for naught, you I know? Think everybody yeah. gets wiped out, and uh, the only two left to repopulate Westeros are Gilly and Grey Worm, which is, like, sadly ironic. But he can't. Dude, I that. see. Well, I well, see. you know they, what they said in Jurassic Park: N- nature, nature uh, finds, finds, a finds a way. Crossovers after crossover. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what's the next topic you want to talk uh, about? We can talk about babies. If we want to talk about babies, do we think there's going to be any babies in the season? So you said Sansa's pregnant. I don't know. I have a feeling that they're going to throw like a wrench like that. But like, there's there was the um, notion that Cersei is pregnant at oh, the end of season yeah. seven. So if you know if she got pregnant, oh that's crazy! I mm-hmm. I like the Cersei's pregnant aspect, yeah, because that means she could. This is an awful thing to say. She could die at the hands of a younger. Yes, or, that's also one of the theories that she, that might be the um the Lanquar or whatever is her own from child. the prophecy from of, the prophecy from that, that basically calls her to ruin everything. Yes, that prophecy haunted her since yes. she was a kid. That's why even before necessarily her children were at risk. They were always kind of at risk. She was like, her hackles were up because like everything points to someone's going to tr- kill her. Some younger sibling or it, whether it's uh, Tyrion or whoever or that's that's interesting. Oh yeah, there's like a 10 page list of like who it could be that could kill her. Right. So, because that isn't, Jamie's technically young. They're twins, but who was born first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cersei. Cersei. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. Mm. I liked it a lot. So, but yeah, I, uh, she's, she's not going to have a... a Good pregnancy. I don't. Think. No, I don't think so. Yeah. So, but I don't then, like the idea. I don't like Sansa. I really think we should stop handling that issue with Sansa. It yeah. feels like it was way too icky, and it's also weird because it doesn't happen in the books, so that yeah. makes it way different than anything else. I don't know if that's really going to be worth it, but um, uh, there's a question about what happens between what's going on between Braun and, and Sansa, which I guess we could talk about later on. Um, who what else? is going on between Braun and... Oh, I guess we'll talk about Yazen. Uh, I guess, I mean, if we're talking just pregnancies, I guess Daenerys. Yeah. So but then there's that whole whatever happened in... Was it season one or season two where the witch said that she was barren and everything? But then it's all like, well, if John's Targaryen too... Oh. Da, 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 da. I don't understand the mythical magic behind it or whatever, but it's theorized that she could, you know, potentially be, have a baby because of him. I think that so. kind of tracks too. So. I think that could be a nice way of regaining the Targaryen line without uh, making John, aunt. yeah, without making John or Daenerys survive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess yeah. those are all possibles. I guess it's. I thought that whole relationship was just weird because it is it. A, I don't think those actors have any chemistry. No. And B, it's this weird sort of I've dreamed of you my whole life before I met you kind of moment when they do meet. And it's just – it's so weird. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. The, the fact – just the, the the mechanics of them getting together didn't make an awful lot of sense. But you knew it – it's one of those weird moments of like, listen, we got to get these two together. Uh, really? By hook or by crook, I guess. You didn't think they fit? I think no, they, they I, kind of it's fit. like why are these two – Getting rem- involved romantically. I don't know. Yeah, Two powerful hot. people. They both have a lot of pressure. Like I understand yeah. how they could be people who like feel like they can relate to each other very easily. You, you know, know what I mean? I don't. He's that, hot. He's that cold. That can trick sizzle. itself into romantic love. I, it's yeah. possible. I just I don't understand know. how ro- uh, how uh, that is, relationships work. It's well, no, I'm gonna go hard no on James. This one, like, listen, James. If that were if that were the case, there are 110 different options. That any of them could have gone for to relieve their stress, as it were. Yeah, not and in, not. Disagree. Yeah, not as an equal. Not as somebody no. who's I, with it, who has. Oh yeah, power. like if Daenerys yeah. went to one of her soldiers, was like, "Please pleasure me," and they'd I mean, be like, "Yes, my queen." And in fact, <laughs> what it, well, do I no, do? they wouldn't. In they, the books, well, most of them are eunuchs. That's well, true. There, there are different <laughs> ways. That, but in exactly. The books, yeah, be in creative. In the books, she is no. In the book, she does have lovers that yeah. are amongst. Yeah. Her freed slaves. So, it, and it's not, uh, you know, and in the books, John is makes a big deal about how much of, uh, you know, a virgin he has to remain, except for, um, uh, I forgot her name, Egret. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, there's, I, I think it tracks dies. that they would end up together, uh, and it, I think it helps that they're both. Uh, you know, gorgeous people in point of view roles that are <laughs> that require each so, other's support to survive. And I think it I works. Do disagree with. I, I don't think that Daenerys sees him as an equal. Yeah, I'm with yeah. Pete on that. Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, equal yeah. doesn't necessarily require. Uh, uh, you know, a vast. Remember, she, uh, Daenerys's crew on the dragons, the guys who are riding in like 
I forgot the name of the, whatever Targaryen king had a bunch of queens riding in on dragons. They are her uh, running crew. They are her assistants slash husbands. They're her worker droids. There's a romantic thing there, but it's not necessarily like equal equality no. there. Yeah, I'm going to throw out one other thing that ties them together that I, I'm sure you'll disagree with, but it's the supernatural experience, right? Think about all the characters in Game of Thrones other than like the woman in red or something like that who are obviously like steeped in the supernatural. Like these two are the only two characters that have literally been their own supernatural yeah, experience. They Daenerys died and, and the came fire back. and the, yeah. the death and coming back and same thing with Jon, right? That's yeah. that's something that I think ties them together. You know, again, I think sensically we can all say like yeah john and daenerys together would be terrible if the show's like and they lived happily ever after we'd be like that eh, doesn't track nope yeah. <laughs> but i can see why they were like you know what yeah yeah so that relate so we agree that that relationship is doomed but how is it doomed i think it's doomed by one of them dying at very I, least I'm, again I, I think if she is pregnant i think her and uh, unfortunately uh i think her and the child die i think they die in, in whatever Weird sacrifice stops the White Walkers. I don't want to see another uh, Daenerys child die. That I don't want to either. Is boring, but yeah, we we could see that. Um, what else? What else do we want to predict? Let's do more predictions. I uh, 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 bouncing off the Sansa thing. I was saying this a, uh, a little bit earlier. Um, I she I don't think she's gonna be pregnant, but I one hundred percent think she's gonna heel turn. Yeah, Sansa? we talked about this before, didn't we? Yeah, this is this is what made me go. I want to have a whole podcast yeah. about this because I I I think one hundred percent she's she's been. S- you know, scorned so much that I could see it, but I don't know if she could turn against her family. I think she definitely can turn against John. What family? That's like, true. Like no, Arya, Arya, who I've already said might not even be actually her family. I don't think that's true, though, because she met Nymeria in the forest, and Nymeria would have been able to sense because animals are smart. That's fair, but I'm, so, yeah. I like the plot idea, but, it might but not I don't be think true. it's going to happen. But I also think Sansa has slowly but surely learned throughout the course of this series that the bad guy's way you done, even to the point where she goes ahead and his forces to help out John, and that's the reason why they win in the Battle of the Bastards. So I'm just saying, like, she's slowly but surely, like, the bad guy way wins. The bad guy got me my revenge. Bad guy got us where we're at. John's too honorable. He doesn't think like they do. And I think she's going to heel turn at some point because I think she is, like... Do you think she's going to heel turn in a beneficial way or in nah. a sabotage way? I think she's going to find a way to get John out because I think, to a certain extent, not only think she ne- she deserves or has the inheritance to the crown, I think she just thinks he's incompetent. Like, I think even him having an affair or any kind of romantic um, entanglements with Daenerys is going to be more evidence for her to be like, What if he's plot go out. twist John ends up with? Sansa. No, I no. Well, I would, Lord, I would hope not. <laughs> I mean, Why not? Actually, uh, well, they're not related. They, they it's grew up less, together. Less incestuous than uh, him and Daenerys. Yeah, but they did grow up together. But regardless, Bronn. So uh, this brings up um, Bran Stark and uh, Sansa. They have a very awkward moment where Bran, the three-eyed Raven, is like, "Hey, you look beautiful on your wedding night." I'm like, "Yeah." Let's not bring up that. Yeah. That's kind of creepy. But, like, there are a lot of suggestions that uh, Bran knows something about Sansa or knows Sansa's future, perhaps. Maybe knows she's going to do something bad. Uh, And I feel like one of those things could be that could be leading towards the Sansa turning the Queen of the North going dark on this. Oh, she could be the Dark Queen. I really just. I wish that if whatever they do with Sansa, because she's an interesting character that went through a lot and then totally got screwed by the story in, I guess, season six, yeah. that they don't make it as simple as, I don't trust my family, so I'm going to turn against them. No. Like, there's plenty of there's plenty of gray area where, you know, doing one thing, doing the honorable thing is bad and you have to be, you know, logical and have to do the the thing that's right for your people. And if she's doing that and somehow like it goes up against John in that respect, that's cool. But just being like, no, I can't support John because I have uh, I want to be the bad guy in this season. That's not as far. Yeah. No. I think honestly she might go as far as like even though like things back at when she lived in King's Landing were horrible she might trust Cersei more than she trusts her family at this point. Because I hate I don't, that. I know, no. I know, and I hate it too. I hate it too. I think it's garbage. But I think that there's they're, they're, they're subtly setting a lot of that up, especially considering a lot of the moments that her and Cersei had way back when she was in King's Landing. 
like Cersei gave a lot of subtle and bizarre advice to try and stave off some of the yeah. things. That I, was, uh, uh, there was and a then difference twist. between. Oh, she does kill Cersei. Yeah, I give her a, so much more credit than that. Yeah, yeah. there's but a I huge get, difference yeah. between saying, "Hey, uh, you know, you told me not to trust people. You were right, Cersei, and I stab you." Then uh, you know what? <laughs> Cersei told me not to trust people. I like Cersei. That's just <laughs> yeah. bad writing. It's like she Al, you're a bad writer. She's I not going. To... I think it's bad writing too. I just don't think the show's. You're above just a that. pessimist. Then you. Yeah. I don't. I don't think she could trust Cersei. Yeah. No. It's like I. I think that she may have during her time in King's Landing become enough of a pragmatist to decide that Cersei can offer her more, or she can get more That's what from I'm thinking, Cersei yeah. by aligning with Cersei. That's a possibility. That's the way I'm thinking of it. Like, is she's th- she's going to think of it more pragmatically in the idea of like, well, I, John's going to lead us astray. I think maybe if I throw my lot of my supporters I, over still, here, I think I'm, that I'm not would happy be, with it. But I'm uh, not happy either. But I and I think that is a choice that would make most readers or viewers miserable. Yeah, uh, I, and I think that makes it extremely likely to happen. Yep. Mm. Honestly, I think. If they all survive, it's going to be an easy transition. I think John is aware he is a wartime leader. No offense, but every time we've seen John have to deal with the mundane parts of leading, he really screws the pooch. Right. Sansa is someone who really has the, you know, the knack for it. I think very easily if, let's say, John, Daenerys, and Sansa survive, which I don't think they all will, I actually kind of think John's going to be the one to bite it. Um, you know, I think Sansa naturally leads Winterfell, um, you know, and Daenerys kind of becomes the overarching queen or something to that effect. Yeah. But uh, my question about, like, do we, we talked a little bit about Bronn and we, do we think he, we do think he's going to make it right. He has no intentions for vying for the throne at this point. Right. Bronn Stark. Yeah. Bronn isn't Brand? even Bronn. Bronn isn't Bronn. Bran, sorry. Yeah. Bran isn't Bran. Bran. Yeah. There is a Bronn, isn't there? Yeah, I think there is. <laughs> sorry. There's a the Brand and Till. Mm. Oh, man, jeez. You can see why we if, get confused. If you're talking about deaths, I feel like the Three-Eyed Raven has to go. All this stuff about prophecies and the supernatural, you know, ideally Game of Thrones ends with kind of the end of this age, signifying the end of that age would be the end of the, you know, oh. the Three-Eyed Raven. Yeah, the I think thing the Three-Eyed Raven over. passes leading into the Fourth Age. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the magic so – here's the tr- problem. The magic in the world was already dead before this story began. So if it's really the story of the dying of magic, and I think us Lord of the Rings fans want it to be, or are trying to make it that, then yes, it goes where all the magic dies off. But narratively, it's weird because most people in the world didn't even know magic was real. They still don't know what magic is real. Maybe the next six episodes. They had to capture a zombie every, to prove it. Maybe in the next six episodes, everyone and will find out and know it. Don't, didn't believe right? it. Then, uh, then uh, the three eyed raven dies, and there's a new three eyed raven. He's been it for like a hot second, and then he dies, and all magic dies off. Like, f- objectively, the rest of the world's like, what? What happened? So I'm thinking we may be leaning on our Lord of the Rings too hard. I agree. Uh, it's possible, but I, I'm, I would not be satisfied with that being the ending. It seems a little bleh, but. Uh, it's interesting. It's also interesting that there's, what, six episodes left? So here's my bold prediction. Six six episodes, just so you know, I, all the episodes range between an hour and a half to an hour and 45 That's minutes. That's not true. Yeah, they're the all, first no? episode is only 54 minutes long. The second is no, only 58. 54 minutes? Yeah, they're, they're lying to us. They were saying they were long. They yeah. lied. Yeah, so ah, boo. my point yeah. is... I know. Maybe, maybe the um, title credits are like 16 minutes long or something. Because <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Probably. Yeah. Boom, 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 bigger map now. I just don't think that uh, with six episodes, uh, my bold prediction is that, and I knock on wood that this happens, is they actually put aside most of the melodramatic stuff we've been predicting will happen and, and like turning Sansa into another villain and doing all this and another twist because there are so many loose ends to tie up. They could just make it action piece after action piece after action piece with the already existing lines drawn and it would still be super satisfying. It would actually be probably more satisfying than suddenly saying Golden Company now has four new characters who have their own backstories, <laughs> and we're going to revisit the Onion Knight. And remember that one thing that doesn't that appeared in the books and didn't appear in the, in the books. We're going to bring those guys in. Hey, what happened to Rickon? I meant real Rickon. I mean other Rickon. Like I don't know if any of that would be satisfying, or I'd be just like season eight going, "What is this?" And there's one thing I'll be saying. I'll say. The TV Game of Thrones, as it's becoming more television and less based on the books, 
does a better job of saying, let's rein it in. The books oh, the get books more are so and more sprawling. <laughs> they just keep getting sprawling. Yeah, the, like, doesn't Daenerys have a brother in that the one? The shows are like, you know what? We have enough He characters. had a brother in this one. No, no, no. There's a another different... Another brother. Another brother who's been secretly raised to take the throne yeah, by some other Yeah, there was a kid. younger brother storyline in, I've heard uh, that, yeah. in yeah. the books that doesn't... I don't think appears in them. No, thank in, God. Uh, I think show. he does, though. But he might. we didn't even like we didn't even touch on it. Yeah. I think it's a I think it's a balance, right? So like I like that Game of Thrones is getting more streamlined, but I think if if it lacks some of the if it lacks too much of the the depth and politicism that It's not Game you of know, Thrones. It's not yeah, it's not Game of Thrones. That well that's the big problem with season six. In, at least in my mind, is it's all dumb. It's all dumb action piece and dumb story and dumb this and dumb that. My favorite moments from Game of Thrones are honestly the stuff they shot to fill time in season one. The conversation between Tywin and Jaime, the uh, or the conversation between Arya and Tywin in season two. It, it's just that interpersonal play. You've got such a great cast, and you've got so many great people, and you've got so many really great directors and and writers, and you know, except for season six, uh, you know, working on this show. Like, yeah, it's great, but if you want to make Game of Thrones the Marvel movie, uh, I guess you can do that. But <laughs> I don't know. I'm not entirely interested in that either. I want to see, you know, for the last season, I'd like to see the good line of both. I'd like to get a little bit of both. I think last episode we find out that Jacob is the smoke monster. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Lost references. Sorry. I never uh, watched Lost. Yeah, well, it's a, it's, did a, it's a Game of Thrones. Keep it that way. All right, so what are we going thing. for on the next right. on the list? I really thought that was the end of the podcast. That's no, why I made my no, we're kind of yeah. at that point. Like, we can talk more. Like, do we think anyone's going to come back from li- the death? I would I'd yeah. love to see <laughs> Lady Stoneheart show up and go like, I'm here! <laughs> but um, I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Ned Stark's head should uh, <laughs> just have his own monologue. He should be like, what if he was just narrating every episode yeah. just for the last season? <laughs> I would like if I Sean Bean came back for something, just for a scene. Just, just a memory. Yeah. Well, the that's Stark kids thing. are in a heap of trouble this week. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we might see a cameo or something from some old people, whether it's a flashback or a thing like that. But I don't think we'll see I think this is impor- actual people come back to life. I think this is important. What hanging thread do you need to have resolved for season eight to be considered successful for you? Oh, if um, Tormund's going to get it with Brienne. Oh, really? I want to see their giant that's babies. That's funny and great. <laughs> and I, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I like that one. I, I, yeah, didn't Tormund almost eat it? Like, we're not unsure. Sh- yeah, he almost, I think he almost died, but I think he's all right. Okay. Or actually, I, I think, think he, he may be dead. I think no, no, he's no, up it was in the unclear. air. unclear. It's unclear. Yeah. I think he's all right, though. I think he's all right. All right. Uh, for me, it is, I, is Bran Night King? Why do, why does it seem so much like he's Night King? He looks he's like everyone. Though, he looks the he? same face. He's got the same nose. I think that's what it is. I never bought that. Mm. All Night right, King? but that's not my thing. I just uh, yeah. The but, uh, uh, my unresolved thread. I would like to know what's going with, on with Nymeria, the wolf, Arya's wolf. Honestly, ding, ding, I, ding. I'm so interested in that. Even in the books, I was like. What's going on? This feels like it's going to be something. Pack. Yeah, if she's going to come in, yeah. she's going to rip and it, it's, shit up. It sort of does play in the books because, as I think, Beric Dondarrion uh, and and Lady Stoneheart are all killing like Lannisters out there. One of the people who are killing all these horrible people out in the war, one of the groups, is a f- super feral evil wolf pack. So, mm. I mean, maybe that's all it ever is, and it's just not going to come up in the show. Yeah, but I, I would like to see that resolved. A crazy one, I know. I have a weird thing. Like I kind of don't understand the the motivations of our villains that that hard. I like the uh, the 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 White Walkers. Like, they're zombies. Like, well, no, the zo- no, they're the zo- there are zombies, and then there are the dudes that oh, the like okay, the, the actual, actual White Walkers. White Walkers. Yeah, and I feel like we got kind of an origin story for the for the bad guy for the main the Night King. Is that what he's called? Is yeah, that- the Night mm. King. And I feel, but it also was weird and involved fairies. That was when they pierced him through the heart with that thing or whatever. It was like this human that they did that to. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. children of the forest so are not ch- fairies. Yeah. Children oh. of the forest, uh, 
Uh, yeah, don't call them that. They so basically, really the, the way it works, the children of the forest <laughs> are angry at humans for cutting down their, their holy orchards yeah. Yeah. and stuff for their new gods. So they way of paying him back. So I want to shove this dragon glass in your heart. And oh my God, it turns humans even worse because violence makes things worse is one of the themes of Game of Thrones. Yes. yes. So that's one of the reasons why I don't think it's going to end with everybody dying because it would be really horrible and like not really what satisfying. If, what if everybody dies peacefully? Well, <laughs> Everyone I, just lays down if, and goes to bed. Yeah. I actually think what if what if like helping people and curing people actually affects this? What if the miracle of dragon glass being able to cure people of these diseases comes into play? Well, the looks on people's faces right now tell me not so much. Like uh, it would be really it'd weird. Be really nice, but uh, here's my thing. Like we've had a very very dark show. And I, and I don't mean that in the high school edgelord kind of dark. This has been a very abysmal kind of show. <laughs> Bad things have happened to everybody. Um, and for it to end with, let's hug it out, bro, I'd be like, this is weird. I like, like, not necessarily that it's bad. It'd just be like, you hit a weird tonal shift. Like, I'd love it. I mean, I wouldn't be against it too much either, but it would be weird. <laughs> and again, like I'm saying, like I'd like some semblance of motivation for the bad guy, other than hey, I got turned into this thing. I guess I got to kill people now. It's like, uh, you do what? Uh, all right. So, any other lo- loose uh, threads? I think the uh, if the flaming sword thing that I, I the wanted. Azura. Oh, does the Azura sword actually exist or whatever? Or the Azura, the, the the basically the the prophet of the. Uh, the what is it the um not the prophet but the uh, the Lord Azor of Light High. right the, the Lord, Lord of Light. Light yeah the the Messiah that for yeah. their faith yes. yeah is uh, is that a real thing or is it somehow connected to anything because it's only loosely associated with anything. it's actually like six people oh yeah yeah nice <laughs> is that and one real? of them is if... the Onion dude the Onion nut and two onion of them are night. just random people named Jerry oh man. yeah Jerry one Jerry two yeah yeah onion. that's how they're referred to. <laughs> Then there's White Jerry, which is weird because they're all white. Yeah, that's, that's very strange. Awkward. Sam, because why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm tentative about this show. I kind of don't. I want it to end pretty badly, but I'm also like, man, right. congratulations. Yeah, if, you're gonna get your wish. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to end pretty badly. Yeah, but I bet in like three if years there's gonna be a spinoff show. Oh yeah, oh, no. Pre- a prequel maybe. Not not you're prequel, not gonna have yeah. to wait three years. Oh no, yeah, we can uh, wait for pre- Aegon and what's his name. It took us two years wanna, to get the I'd next like season. Another hanging thread. I'd like to see the Hound in the Mountain fight. Ooh, darn think, it, Frank, that was mine. Oh, I'm so sorry. Fight, fight, if I don't fight, get Cla Game Ball, this thing has been useless. <laughs> I I'm gonna be real and say I think all the teeth out of that fight is gone. Uh, like the mountain isn't even a person anymore. He's well, a golem. That, that makes it even better. <laughs> Especially yeah. because you don't know what happens with the Night King. Maybe they start to become more and more aware or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Something. He's you can make it good. the same kind of thing, though. You can just keep he saying, is... like, what if it's the worst version of the thing we're suggesting? What if it's the best version of the thing we suggested? What, if, what if we what have if low it's expectations? Star Lord Dance happy. It Out is the way it ends. I'll give I you want the, Like, that. if Jon Snow walks up to the Night King and is like, dance off right now. We're going to do this. It's like, all right. And then Night King is like, you mean like uh, Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy? He's like, yeah. How do you even know? He's like, because I'm the three-eyed raven. I know the future, too. What's up? And then they start dancing. I love that. Yep. Here, here's, here's my prediction. Mm. The big reveal at the end, it turns out Jon Snow does know something. Oh. oh. Wow. Yeah. All right. I'm into that in a weird way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Keep it in the family. No, I'm serious. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. Uh, I, are we all going to tune in? We're going to watch the show. I'm going to watch it on Monday. All right. I'll try. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to probably pirate it. Honestly, wow. Uh, Honestly, it's bad. Well, you know what? Saul's or Son would approve. So (laughs) I think um, it's a, the show has gone up and down for me. I I really like the grim darkness. I don't like it. And the books uh, were really hard to read at some point. But to be honest, I think it's found a good spot. I like the, I like, this is one of those times where the TV show, like, loosened the, the, the source material enough to make it more palatable for me, uh, except for the few times where it made it far, far worse. Oh, yeah. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. You wrapped it up real well, Frank, but I got to <laughs> reopen. I, I just thought of the one thread I need. Oh, all right. Uh, and I, I may be screwing up the name. Re- correct me if I'm wrong. Serio. I yes, Arya's dance teacher. I, quote one hundred percent. I, I what's up with that? I want him to be like. I want him to come back and be like, yeah, I was a rod the whole time. Yeah. And he kills. Not today. Not um, today. Not yeah. today. Death. 
I guarantee I you, he's a faceless man. That yeah, I think he is. He's he isn't he the one that kind of told her about that? Maybe stuff? he's mm-hmm. Arya now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Maybe we're all our. Maybe now. she was always Syria. <laughs> Man. What? Mind blown. Actually, the entirety of the Game of Thrones like opening sequence and everything else is in the bowl of a small child who's like also watching St. <laughs> Elsewhere. And, huh, interesting. And he's hanging from the collar around a cat's neck. <laughs> yes. Which is actually also in a bowl, a snow globe that also has St. Elsewhere in it. It's all, it's infinite St. Elsewhere's all the way. It's, it's, it's St. Elsewhere's all the way down. And then Bob Newhart wakes up. <laughs> okay, no, actually, real, real thing for two seconds. Yeah. I would kill for that to be the ending. Not Bob Newhart, but somebody just waking up like, man, a weird dream. Oh, we George, George, about something George R. R. Martin going, and and then the truth is going to be in bookstores in two years. What if that's it? Oh, my God. oh, that would be the only way of getting people to read these books again. He would just just the last twenty minutes of that hour and a half long series finale is him holding up his two middle fingers <laughs> to the camera, daring anyone to say. I, I feel wrong. like there would be an outburst of like mobbing. I, I, I would like I to see like a bit. fifteen minute secret uh, sequence of. George R. R. Martin waking up, going to the bathroom, and just like taking a long piss with this shocked look on his face, and then all of a sudden Patrick Duffy pulls aside the uh, the shower curtain. He's like, mm-hmm. "What's the matter? Did you have a bad dream?" How many more <laughs> obscure references can we make? Of <laughs> holy crap, of who weird. shot J. R. Is not an obscure. Oh, reference. it is. I don't know if uh, it's I an outdated it's... reference, but it's not obscure. Oh, I don't know. I think most of those people have died. That season most was a dream. Watch yeah. that, oh. uh, James. Do you have anything to say before we uh, end this? Yeah, we're just going to go into that final battle sequence. It's going to fade fade to black. HBO precedence has already been set. Oh, hey, very good. <laughs> Soprano did it. Only if uh, only if. The Starks are sitting around the table at Holstein's. That's the only way I will accept it. This has been a non-productive media presentation. Executive producer, Frank Hablawi. This program and many others like it on the Non-Productive Network is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Please share it, but ask before trying to change it or sell it. For more information, visit non-productive.com.